In a stunning development that has caught the attention of Christians around the world, an Israeli scientist has made a groundbreaking discovery in the drying bed of the Euphrates River. As the waters of this ancient river recede, not only are regions like Syria and Iraq grappling with severe water shortages, but startling biblical prophecies are coming to the forefront. The Euphrates is drying up, and according to the book of Revelation in the Bible, this is a sign that could signal the end times. What has been uncovered in this once mighty river could change our understanding of history and biblical prophecy. So let's watch this video today to learn more about this earth-shaking revelation and what it means for the world we know. The Euphrates River, a vital water source for millions, is currently on a path that might lead it to dry up completely by 2024. The situation could improve or worsen. Nobody knows if the river will regain its water. Historically, during dry years, the river's flow has reduced to nearly half its average annual flow. Moreover, the water stored behind the Euphrates Dam has dropped dramatically from 14 billion cubic meters to just 10 billion. This significant reduction has caused the lake to lose 75% of its effective reserve. The shrinking of the Euphrates has captured the world's attention across multiple disciplines science, geography, and society, and has raised concerns about the spiritual implications of such a drastic change. Many are closely watching to see what will happen next, pondering the profound effects it could have on the region and beyond. Should the Euphrates River dry up, especially in Iraq, the consequences could be catastrophic. Agriculture, livestock, and industries that rely on this critical water source would face severe challenges. Millions of people would lose their livelihoods and lack access to sufficient clean water for drinking and sanitation. This dire scenario could lead to widespread disease outbreaks, social unrest, and potentially the displacement of millions of refugees into neighboring countries such as Turkey and Iran. Such a mass migration could strain resources and relationships, potentially leading to conflict. The possibility of war fueled by water scarcity and the resultant economic stress is a grim prospect for a region already burdened with geopolitical tensions. As the Euphrates River continues to dry up, the situation could escalate into a significant geopolitical crisis. The possibility of Iran allying with Iraq to potentially destroy one or more of Turkey's dams to release water flow is on the table. Such an action could drastically increase tensions since Turkey is a NATO ally. An attack on Turkey would compel the United States and other European NATO countries to defend it. Possibly leading to a war with Iran and Iraq. This scenario illustrates how the drying up of the Euphrates is not just a regional issue, but could impact global stability. In addition to creating political and social upheaval, the drying up of the Euphrates River is unearthing many intriguing and mysterious artifacts and phenomena. As the river exposes areas submerged for centuries, each finding potentially adds a piece to the historical puzzle of this ancient and storied region. Biblical prophecies and modern concerns. Among the mysteries being revealed are those tied to biblical prophecies, such as the vision of the angel at the Euphrates. According to the Apocalypse in the Bible, as recounted by Saint, John, this angel plays a crucial role during the events of the sixth trumpet. Saint, John describes hearing a voice from the golden altar, which commands the angel to release four angels previously bound within the river. These angels are then depicted as rising from the river ready to execute their divine mission to bring destruction. This apocalyptic scenario is deeply intertwined with the spiritual beliefs held by many about the Euphrates River, which is viewed as a site of significant prophetic events. The river's drying up has led to increased interest in these prophecies, as people wonder about the potential unleashing of demonic forces described in religious texts. Ephesians 6, 12 underscores the spiritual dimension of these events reminding us that the struggle is not just against visible enemies, but against a broader spectrum of cosmic and spiritual forces. In the spiritual and historical context surrounding the Euphrates River, a significant area is often linked to pivotal biblical events and prophetic narratives. This region, steeped in religious and mythological significance, is said to be closely associated with human sin and divine judgment. The Euphrates region is historically notorious due to its connections with several major biblical events. According to Genesis 4, 8, it is near the presumed location of the Garden of Eden, where the first murder was committed. The first war recorded in the Bible, described in Genesis 14 as a confederacy, also took place in this region. Furthermore, it is the starting point of Nimrod's kingdom, as outlined in Genesis 10, 
and the origin of Babylonian idolatry, which faces divine judgment as depicted in Zechariah 5 and Revelation 18. Symbolic interpretations of the four angels, the reference to the four angels bound at the Euphrates, particularly noted during the sounding of the sixth trumpet in Revelation, carries deep symbolic meaning. Some interpretations view these angels as symbolic figures representing spiritual forces or destructive powers that become active in the world during the end times. These entities are considered agents of divine judgment or instruments of God's wrath. Transcripts provided by Transcription Outsourcing, LLLC. Additionally, some scholars propose that these angels could symbolically represent historical figures or powers, such as military leaders or nations strongly associated with the Euphrates region. This view connects the biblical imagery to specific geopolitical events or conflicts, emphasizing the strategic importance of this area throughout history. According to prophetic texts, significant destruction was destined for the Roman Empire, which had persecuted the early Christian church. This destruction, however, was delayed to allow for divine arrangements to protect God's people. Revelation 9 offers a chilling narrative in which, despite catastrophic events and divine interventions like the release of the angels, humanity remains unrepentant. This stubbornness in the face of clear signs can be interpreted as a profound message about human nature and spiritual blindness. Some see the drying up of the Euphrates River as a modern-day manifestation of biblical prophecies, underscoring the notion that God is in control and reveals these events in His timing. These events are not without purpose. They serve as reminders of the divine authority over natural and supernatural occurrences. The text suggests that beneath the physical world, in what could be termed the underworld, four angels exist. These beings, possibly separated from humanity by the earth itself, are depicted as containing so much power that their release could result in cataclysmic effects on the physical and spiritual planes. But their existence and potential unleashing are thought to protect us by maintaining the boundary between the spiritual and the material worlds. The historical significance of the Euphrates. The Euphrates River and the nearby Tigris and the Jordan River form a significant geographical and historical region known as the Fertile Crescent. This area is heralded as one of the most crucial cradles of human civilization. Historical accounts place the emergence of one of humanity's earliest civilizations, the Sumerian civilization, around 3800 BC in this very locale. Mesopotamia, the land between the Tigris and Euphrates rivers, hosted this advanced civilization, which founded several pivotal city-states such as Eridu, Nippur, Lagash, Kish, Ur, and the renowned city of Uruk. At its zenith around 2800 BC, the city of Uruk in ancient Sumer was bustling with an estimated population ranging from 40,000 to 880,000 inhabitants, making it one of the most populous cities in the world at that time. The architectural ingenuity of the area was remarkable, characterized by each city-state being fortified with walls constructed from flat convex mud bricks. The Sumerians were pioneers in various fields well ahead of their contemporaries in other ancient civilizations, such as Egypt and those along the Yellow River, they were adept at making pottery, weaving cloth, and executing extensive irrigation works, transforming agriculture in the region. Additionally, they utilized animals like buffalo and cows to plow fields, demonstrating their innovative approach to agriculture animal husbandry. However, this flourishing civilization did not endure indefinitely. Around 1940 BC, the Sumerian city-states fell victim to an invasion by the Elamites, who looted and caused significant destruction. Subsequently, the rise of the Hammurabi dynasty of Babylonia around 1792 BC to 1750 BC brought further changes. The Babylonians succeeded in unifying the lands of Mesopotamia under their control, leading to the gradual disappearance of the distinct Sumerian identity. By around 1700 BC, the Sumerians were largely assimilated into the emerging Assyrian and Babylonian cultures. The potential drying up of the Euphrates River could unveil further secrets buried in the ancient ruins of Sumer. Excavations and studies have already revealed that the Sumerians were remarkably advanced in writing, astronomy, mathematics, geometry, and medicine. Artifacts and cuneiform tablets indicate that they had developed complex mathematical concepts, including multiplication tables, methods for calculating area and circumference, and even medical procedures like craniotomy. The Sumerians were pioneers in agriculture, urban development, and warfare. They developed various weapons and protective gear to support their frequent conflicts. Among their innovations were spears and bronze helmets. 
which were essential for the protection of soldiers during battles. Additionally, they utilized shields made from materials like leather or wicker, which were lighter and offered mobility during combat. The Sumerians are also credited with introducing chariots and carts, which they used as combat vehicles. These advancements indicate the Sumerians' strategic warfare approach and efforts to enhance their military capabilities. The drying up of the Euphrates River holds profound spiritual significance for many, particularly in the context of biblical prophecies and the teachings of Christianity. The river is a crucial geographical feature and a symbolic marker in biblical narratives. About four triple zero years ago, Abraham, a key figure in the Judeo-Christian tradition, crossed the Euphrates River, moving from Ur to Canaan upon God's call. Canaan, which roughly corresponds to modern-day Israel and the West Bank of the Jordan River, is biblically known as the Promised Land, a divine grant to Abraham and his descendants. The Euphrates River is mentioned as one of the boundaries of the Promised Land, and its changing state is often viewed through the lens of eschatology, the study of the end times. For many believers, the changes in the Euphrates River's flow resonate with the prophecies of the end times, which have been contemplated since the ministry of Jesus Christ, marking over two, triple zero years of anticipation. This long duration serves as a reminder of the enduring nature of prophetic expectation and the uncertainty of its fulfillment. Some see the drying up of the river as a sign of Jesus' imminent return, reflecting the belief that such prophetic events signal significant spiritual shifts. However, it is also a call to maintain faith and readiness. As stated in the scriptures, no man knoweth the exact time and the event will come as a thief in the night. Many interpret biblical prophecies concerning the drying up of the Euphrates River as, as signs meant to bolster courage and faith among believers. These signs are viewed as confirmations that the faithful are on the right path, despite the challenges faced. The idea is not to focus anxiously on when the prophesied events will occur, but to live each day with purpose and hope, trusting that all efforts will ultimately be rewarded. Whether caused by natural factors or human intervention, the drying up of the Euphrates resonates deeply with the prophecy John made nearly 2,000 years ago, suggesting it as a sign of the approaching last day. Whether one believes in the Bible or not, the unfolding events offer compelling evidence to some that the return of Christ might be near. A historical overview. The Euphrates River, originating from Turkey and flowing through Syria and Iraq before emptying into the Persian Gulf, stands as the longest river in Western Asia, stretching over three triple zero kilometers. Its waters are primarily sourced from rainfall and melting snow, making it a crucial resource for the regions it traverses. According to the Bible, the Euphrates is historically known as one of the four rivers that flowed from the Garden of Eden. It holds a place of significant religious and cultural importance. Recorded in ancient cuneiform scripts around five, triple zero years ago, and originally called the Buranan River, meaning sacred river, the Euphrates has been central to the development of civilizations. The fertile Mesopotamian basin, which it nourishes along with the Tigris River, has been a hotspot for the emergence of ancient civilizations due to the annual floods that enrich the soil with alluvium. This fertility has supported extensive agriculture and contributed to the region being dubbed the cradle of civilization. The river's ample fishery resources and wide riverbed have facilitated transportation and commerce, bolstering trade and interaction among ancient city-states. Thus, the Euphrates have been a vital physical resource and a cultural and economic artery, nurturing human settlement and civilizations that have had a profound impact on global history. Canaan, known in biblical narratives as the promised land granted to Abraham and his descendants, presents a curious paradox. But unlike the lush, fertile crescent where the grand civilizations of Mesopotamia, such as Babylon and Abraham's homeland, you are thrived, you are Canaan is described as relatively barren situated to the west of the Fertile Crescent and characterized by the narrow and short Jordan River. The land around Canaan does not naturally lend itself to farming due to its largely infertile soil. Canaan's climate and agricultural potential are significantly influenced by its natural water sources, which primarily depend on rainwater. The region experiences two critical rainy seasons. The autumn rains around November, which soften the dry ground, making it suitable for planting crops, and the spring rains in March and April, which ensure that plants receive enough water to grow and contribute to a successful harvest. These seasonal rains are vital for sustaining agriculture in Canaan. 
Planting is impossible without the autumn rains, and crops cannot mature to harvest without the spring rains. This dependency on timely rains for agriculture makes Canaan on a land where geography and religion deeply intersect. According to biblical teachings, if the people adhere to God's commands, he will ensure the rains come at the right times, leading to favorable weather and prosperous living conditions. Conversely, disobedience to God's words is believed to result in irregular rains, leading to crop failures and widespread hardship. Many biblical scholars interpret Canaan's challenging environment as a deliberate divine setup, a spiritual classroom designed by God. This setting is seen as a place for the faithful to practice and strengthen their faith. The Fall of Jerusalem and the Prophecies of Jeremiah During the reign of King Zedekiah and the Kingdom of Judah, the people of Jerusalem increasingly turned away from their faith, engaging in acts that were against God's teachings. The city was rife with corruption, greed, and injustice, permeating all levels of society, from the common folk to high-ranking officials. Observing the moral decay and widespread disloyalty, God decided that the time had come to reclaim the promised land due to the people's disobedience. God sent the prophet Jeremiah to Jerusalem in a final attempt to guide the people back to righteousness. Jeremiah walked through the city, observing and lamenting the wickedness that had taken hold. He saw murder, theft, hypocrisy, and adultery. He found that both prophets and priests were corrupt, offering false prophecies and assurances to the people who, naive and unaware of their impending doom, were complacent in their ways. Driven by a deep sense of urgency, Jeremiah went to the city's gates, publicly proclaiming the imminent danger from the north that threatened to destroy Judah. However, his warnings fell on deaf ears. In a dramatic gesture, he broke a potter's jar at the sanctuary gates, symbolizing how God intended to shatter the people of Jerusalem and Judah just as easily if they did not amend their ways. Yet, the people remained indifferent to his prophecies. Jeremiah also foretold that a severe drought would come and that foreign invaders would overrun the kingdom. He predicted that the Medes of Persia would conquer their land. Meanwhile, the arrogant king of Babylon felt secure with the city being well fortified and located by the plentiful waters of the Euphrates River. And Babylon's defenses seemed impenetrable with the city surrounded by massive walls and the river's flow controlled by sturdy gates. However, 48 years after Jeremiah's prophecies, King Cyrus II of Persia cleverly strategized to overcome Babylon's defenses. He ordered digging a canal to divert the waters of the Euphrates, lowering the river level and exposing the riverbed. As the Babylonians were distracted by a grand festival, Cyrus and his army seized the moment the Persians enter Babylon by marching along the dried up river beneath the iron gates. This strategic move led to the capture of Babylon with minimal resistance. King Belshazzar of Babylon was killed that night, marking the dramatic fulfillment of prophecy and the fall of a once mighty city. So once a glorious city, it was abandoned 400 years after its fall, lying dormant beneath the earth for nearly two millennia. It wasn't until the 19th century that archaeologists began excavating and bringing its buried secrets to light. This rediscovery fulfilled the prophecy spoken by Jeremiah, declaring that the city would lie desolate, Uninhabited from generation to generation, the prophetic narrative surrounding Babylon continues in the scriptures, portraying it as a dissolute woman atop a formidable red dragon with seven heads and ten horns. This imagery from Revelation depicts catastrophic events where the dragon consumes the woman and battles the Savior. The Savior, depicted as a lamb, symbolizing sacrifice, initiates the opening of the seven seals followed by the sounding of seven trumpets by angels, signaling the onset of divine judgment and warfare against the forces of evil. The seven bowls and the drying of the Euphrates as the apocalypse unfolds, angels dispense seven golden bowls filled with God's wrath upon the earth, each bowl ushering in a new disaster. The pouring of the sixth bowl into the Euphrates is crucial, as it dries up the river, preparing a path for the kings from the east. This action sets the stage for further prophetic events, although the specifics of what the Eastern kings will do remain undisclosed in the scriptures. According to biblical vision, post-apocalypse ushers in the new Jerusalem descending from heaven, a world devoid of the original sin of Adam and Eve, where the survivors of the old world, having been judged and found in the book of life, reside. In this new reality, the water of life flows from the Savior's throne, offering sustenance to all who are thirsty.
However, those not found in the Book of Life face eternal damnation in the lake of fire, marking their end as they are excluded from the new world. Today, the drying up of the Euphrates has exposed once submerged villages, revealing a glimpse into past civilizations and prompting questions about the river's historical levels. Was the original river level the one that flooded these villages? Or is the current low level a return to its initial state? This scenario highlights a significant, perhaps prophetic, shift in the river's behavior, indicating that it might be setting the stage for the prophesied conflicts from the east. So what do you think of the drying of the Euphrates River that terrified all Christians? Comment below and subscribe for more.